Hi friends, welcome to Harmony Hills Home and Garden. I'm Jenny, we're gardening here in Baltimore, Maryland, Zone 7. Today's project is all about planting skip laurels out here on our front yard. So come with me and let's see how it went. So I hope you'll bear with me a little bit because um, when I was doing a different project, I was working on making a new flower bed edge along our front yard here. Um, I got in the middle of thinking about where to put these trees and so things got a little mixed up on my filming anyway. So um, please enjoy my random thoughts about how to place these shrubs. I have to make a decision. I can either put in some shrubs that I have purchased. I don't have enough to do my whole plan over here, but I've purchased a few things. Or I could go ahead and just prepare the beds with the um, cardboard covering and then the different piles of different uh, organic materials to go on top to create the bed and then plant the shrubs later. But I think since I already own the shrubs, I think I'll go ahead and that will be my next step. I want to do a quick recap of the shrubs that we already have in place. First of all, this is the sugar tip um, Rose of Sharon, and this is a very light bluish green with creamy white margins, and it has soft pink uh, double ruffled flowers when it's blooming in the summer. And what I would love for this is to be backed by some dark green foliage. Um, because I think it will show up the best if it's against a foil of dark green. So um, I had in mind what I might do here, but I've changed my mind. So I'm not sure exactly which dark green foliage is going to go in here. Oh, I should mention, um, I'm a little bit scattered with this project. I'm thinking that I'm not going to do a whole line of the same plant down the row. One, it's boring. Two, I don't really need to block out entirely the view of my neighbors. I just want to have a nice pretty shrub border along here. And if it does a little bit of coverage of sight lines, that's fine. But my neighborhood is really pretty, actually. It's a historic neighborhood and I don't mind seeing things in my neighborhood. So I'm not looking for a strong, thick hedge. I'm looking for a pretty shrub border that can be turned into an extension of this mixed border here. So with that in mind, I'm thinking that right behind this sugar tip, we'll put a grouping of um, one or two or three, probably two, probably three of the same evergreen, whatever it turns out to be, it might be Burford Hollies, like I just took out of the front, or it might be something else, I'm not sure yet. But what I have to worry about is that these two trees right here are black walnut trees, and they put out that substance called juglone, and they're toxic to some shrubs and plants. So whatever I plant here has to be able to withstand the juglone, which is in the root zone of these trees. And so that means I can't expect success from the skip laurels that I thought I might be putting here. In fact, this right here is a skip laurel that used to be in our side garden um, and we removed it from there because it wasn't doing well and I thought maybe it was because it wasn't watered enough or it could have been from the black walnut. I'm not sure which it was. So we moved it and I hoped that I kept enough roots to be able to uh, transplant it successfully to this location. And you can see, hmm, not so successful. We have a little bit of green. Maybe this part is green, but most of the rest of it is dead. And so, um, I'm thinking that it could be from the roots not being um, strong enough to survive a transplant or it could be because of those black walnuts. So I'm not going to be putting more skip laurels here. I'm going to be putting them over there. But first let me just recap that this is an eastern snowball viburnum. It's one season old. I put this in in I believe April of this year and it's put on a lot of growth. It grew um, a good two feet uh, taller than it was when I planted it earlier. So um, my thought is that we'll have a row of a variety of t kinds of shrubs, some of them providing just evergreen interest like skip laurels, some of them providing floral interest like the sugar tip um, Rose of Sharon, and uh, like this uh, Eastern Snowball Viburnum, it can either grow into a large mounded shrub or maybe we'll limb it up and make it into a small tree. Not exactly sure. We're going to see what kind of growth habit it develops on its own. So if we have one mass of green here, I'll probably be removing that skip laurel because it's just so struggling so much. 
um, and then the big snowball viburnum and then down on that end is where I'm going to put in some skip laurels that I already have purchased. I'm not sure I ever shared with you but Dave finished taking out these old hedges. This was a really old privet hedge probably 50 or 60 years old and it was so thin and, and sparse um, it really was doing no good for anybody's beautification around here so Dave took all of those out including a small tree that he uh, dug the stump out mostly most good enough for sure and so all of this area is ready for planting whatever we decide to put in here now in the springtime this whole area where there's dirt where there's ivy and where there's grass around this tree the entire space is thick with wild um, wild onions. They put up stalks of white flowers. So is that an allium or is that wild onions? I'm not sure. Anyway, it's thick. I mean, it's thick. And so we've tried over the um, course of living here to um, see if we can dig them out. No dice. They are so thick and so deep. We would have to like bring in um, heavy equipment to actually skim off the top six or eight or ten inches of soil in order to get them all out not willing to do that because i don't want to harm the tree and also it's expensive and a mess so um we're going to live with the wild onions for another season at least until we figure out what to do with them um, i'm going to be doing the no dig uh, garden bed preparation method of covering things up and putting um, organic material on top and building up the soil that way i'm not sure how far down this way i'm going to do that project don't know yet. We're going to kind of play that as it comes. So I bought three skip laurels. These are the same shrubs that we put out behind our back fence around the utility pole. They're great screening plants. They have beautiful scented flowers on them when they're in flower. They're gorgeous and beautiful, beautiful evergreen leaves. And I love these shrubs. And so I bought three of them thinking that that would be the start to whatever, um, shrub border we put along here and now I need to figure out the placement of them because again our views aren't terrible we love our neighborhood our houses in the neighborhood are pretty so what I'm going to do is actually go sit on the side porch in the chair that I always sit in and then I'm going to look out here and see what these shrubs would cover up if they grew to be six or eight feet tall in these locations and I'm going to adjust the positioning of these shrubs based on what it looks like from the porch because that's where I'll be viewing them from for the most part. All right, from my seat here, as I look out over the fence through that monk's hood that's blooming, you can see where I've put those skip laurels. And you know what? It really doesn't matter where along there I put them. Um, some people might want to uh, block the view from their sunroom right there, but honestly, they never open their curtains. So I'm not concerned about people sitting in their sunroom looking out over me here. Um, and our neighbors who live in this brown house here, um, they sometimes spend time on their front porch, but I don't mind being able to see that. So I don't really need to block their front porch. Um, and then around this way, there's really nothing ugly to hide, I don't think. Uh, again, my neighbors here with the, um, with the yew shrubs right there, our next door neighbors, those stumps, they say they're going to take them out next spring when they redo their front yard. So. Um, yeah, but I'm actually not going to put the skip laurels up this close to that black walnut tree anyway, so I'm not going to have that as a contender. So really, it kind of doesn't matter where along that row I put those skip laurels as far as what we see from this vantage point. So then it's just a matter of making them look nice from the front porch or from the sidewalk. I'm standing on the front porch now, and uh, let's see. If I put them where they're sitting, that would be fine. I could move them down more toward the sidewalk, closer to the tree. Uh, I'm not sure what the benefit of doing that would be. I might get two more and have five. Would I need five? I See, know. this is where I always fall down in garden design. I have these ideas, but I don't know how to pull them off. I want a variety of shrubs along there. I don't want it to look like a huge hedge, but I also don't want it to look like a mishmash. I don't want it to look accidental or, you know, chaotic. So I'm kind of torn about what to do. All right, so I'm out here on the sidewalk at the street and I'm looking down here and trying to figure it out as well. And I still don't have any better answers than I did from the front porch or the side porch. So this is what they look like if I leave them where they were. Mm, kind of okay. 
nothing to uh, write home about. I think three is not enough is the thing. Either that or I just need to know what else is going with them if I'm doing only three. Oh, this is so hard. Here's a new option. Put them in a triangle, kind of so that when, if, when, if, uh, we extend this garden from the side around in front of the tree, they'll be along that edge. Also, this grouping kind of creates some privacy when you're on the sidewalk. Walking down the sidewalk this way, putting that in that group right there, kind of makes a little bit of privacy a mystery. And then I can plant other things in this area and make this side of this space another distinct garden. And now that I have those shrub laid out in a grouping instead of in a row, I can more easily envision what the rest of this side border can be. We can have one very large shrub like that um, uh, Eastern Snowball is going to become. It'll be really big, 10 to 15 feet in its uh, maturity. Uh, and then we can have other groupings of smaller shrubs. We can have a specimen tree. We can do all sorts of things along here that make more sense rather than just a row of three of this kind and three of that kind and four of that kind. So this makes better design sense all the way around. And so all of that mixed up, out of order, weird brain train of thought stuff to say that we ended up putting the uh, shrub, the shrubs right here in this location, as you can see, um, on the house side of the big black cherry tree. Um, if you're sitting on the porch and you're looking at them, you're at about this angle. And I kind of wish that we would have had this one more like right there so that it would look more even from the porch. But we started digging here and there's a big tree root. And so we had to move that middle one over a little bit. So when you view it from right here, which is roughly the front porch, it looks like a nice grouping, evenly spaced. But when you're on the side porch, you're roughly looking at it from here. That's a little bit off, but that's okay. And when you're standing at our front walk on the sidewalk and you look this way, you can see a grouping of three evergreen shrubs there. So that'll be nice. And then if you're a pedestrian walking in the neighborhood and you walk up along this way, you have um, a nice big spot right here that we'll be able to plant some things in. I don't know what it'll be. It'll probably be something easy care. Um, but also this will provide a little bit of screening from, uh, from the sidewalk for our porch and for our um, front yard as you walk on the sidewalk in front of our house. I don't know what's gonna go here. That's a whole other project. It'll be nothing for a while. I'm going to be focusing on the house side of this border first. Well, thanks for joining me on this video. It's a little bit of a random walk through Jenny's brain. I don't know how much value there's going to be in watching this video since I didn't even really show planting them, but I planted them just like we always plant everything. Dig your hole, twice as wide as the pot, same depth as a pot, put in biotone, start a fertilizer, put in the plant, lift it up about an inch from soil level so that the crown doesn't rot in the winter wet uh, weather, and then backfill with the native soil. I did not put any compost around these, but in the spring we'll be doing top dressing of every flower bed in our garden and they'll get um, that kind of a treatment then. And so, yeah, thank you for joining me. I hope that this was maybe entertaining. I don't know little insight into how my brain works. Uh, I hope you'll join me again on another video very soon. I will see you again soon, friends. Have a wonderful day in your garden. Bye!